Hello, my name is Jay and welcome back to my Tech Vault. And today we're going to be building a Minecraft server PC. And I say a server because what a Minecraft server really is, is just a piece of software that's running on a computer. And that's what it is at the basic level. So we're going to build a PC dedicated just for that. Now, this PC is going to be something that will run your Minecraft server just fine. It will be about equivalent to anything you can get and pay monthly for on a hosting website. Now, there are a couple pros and cons to this, and I'm going to do my best to explain them in the video because there are some serious cons and there are some really good positives to this. Also, we're going to go through and pick out parts. We're actually going to get physical parts, we're going to build a system, and I'm going to walk you through start to finish on how to set one up. We're also going to, of course, benchmark it, test it, and play on it because why not? But for the most part, in today's video, I'm just going to walk you from start to finish on all the information you need to know, everything you need to do to set it up, and then basically show you how well it performs. Also, all under $50. So I like to go through and make budget systems. That's what I like to do on this channel. And that's what I've actually started getting into. And so we, I really know what I'm talking about in the sense of what parts to pick out and how to go about buying them and your strategies for doing so. Now also, a little unknown fact about me is I started playing Minecraft, I believe in 2010. So that means that I've been playing Minecraft for roughly nine years, almost 10. So I also know a pretty good bit about what I'm talking about, not to mention I owned a server hosting business and hosted a server for like seven or eight of those years. So I know what I'm talking about and I also know the hardware now behind them. So I really have a strong idea on how we can get you guys a really nice solid server for really cheap. So that's what we're set out to do in today's video. So first off, I need to make a couple things clear. This is by no means a super good idea if you are getting a super big server. This is not going to be a smart idea. Now, I'm going to explain why. If you're unfamiliar, people out there can get something called stress testers, aka DDoSers. Basically, what they do is they spam your router or your computer with a bunch of information. Now, this is not like a small bit of information like a normal client side would get. You get somebody that's coming over here and just connecting to your server. Now, this is like terabytes of data. And this basically causes your router to shut down and your ISP to pretty much cut it off because it's a little too expensive for them. And so you end up with a situation where you have no internet. And that's not going to be a good idea if you're having a big server and you're going to get exposed to lots of people. people someone's going to do it. I, I've been there. I know what I'm talking about. Someone's going to do it. So not a smart idea if you're hosting a really big Minecraft server. Now, on the other hand, if you were going through and just having a bunch of buddies, you're all hanging out, having a wonderful time, just playing Minecraft, people you know, or maybe you close friends with on the internet, I'm not concerned. They're probably not going to do that. And if they do, it might be a joke and be a one-time experience. And still, I wouldn't be too concerned. Now, obviously, for a couple other ramifications, is that if you are someone that's streaming and you host your Minecraft server on your stream, that can correlate an IP quite quickly, and therefore you get DDoSed and bye-bye to your stream whenever you decide to stream and you have to call your ISP to get your IP reset. Not fun stuff, all of which I've done before, all of which I've experienced before, so I know what I'm talking about. So let's set out for a quick talk about what we're setting out uh, parts-wise. So power supply, I want to start off with simply for the reason that power supplies blow up, catch on fire, and are not a good idea to cheap out on. This is common knowledge, but for seriously, for this low of a budget, especially for $50, and we're setting out with a very, 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 very low budget, please keep in mind, do not cheap out on your power supply. I'm not responsible if your house burns down. Please get a trusted brand, EVGA, Corsair, um, Seasonic. There are a long list of trusted good brands that you can get out here. Heck, I know what I'm talking about, good power supplies. I'm not worried if you guys get a solid power supply, but if you cheap out, not only could you fry all your parts in there, that's kind of possible, quite possible actually, but you also could end up burning your house down. And I honestly, if you're leaving this server on for an extended period of time, um, I have one that I've left on for a lot of months, you do not, do not want to have a cheap power supply because that thing will burn up and I'm not responsible for that, just saying. So next up, let's pick out a couple of the parts that we're gonna set out for. And obviously I'll have all these, I'll go find them, buy them, etc. But we're going to go through and pick out what the ideal part would be. So storage, I want to take a moment to talk about storage because storage in Minecraft servers are actually quite important. Now, hard, regular hard drives, you can actually tell when a Minecraft server is running a mechanical hard drive because it is actually slow to load chunks. It's not necessarily laggy, but when you're loading massive amounts of data, data, however you like to say it, you'll definitely know that the chunks are slow. And this is not normally a problem, but if you get Elytra or some of the more recent items in Minecraft, you're gonna have a bit of an issue in the sense that you're gonna be flying around and the chunks aren't gonna be loading and you're gonna be noticing a lot of lag. 
Now there are two types of lag, that's more of a chunk loading error, uh, not really error, but chunk loading lag. And then there's just like regular lag where you're jittering around and you really can't place blocks. And that can also be attributed to things, not a solid internet connection or what we're gonna be able to fix today, which is a small amount of RAM. CPUs actually um, is not as big of an issue as you think. Minecraft servers don't use a lot of CPU if you've got a lot of RAM. And so I would recommend for our CPU moving on to that topic, a four core processor. Now this can be pretty much anything. Um, you can get Ryzen, you can get a, obviously that's not gonna be in our budget, um, but you can get an old i5, which is what we're gonna try shooting for today. And you also want a good bit of RAM. If I were to be honest with you guys, invest as much money as possible into the RAM. The CPU, i5, and a motherboard will be relatively cheap, but the RAM itself is going to be the most important aspect of this whole computer build. And honestly, a graphics card, if possible, you don't really even need it. You can use the integrated graphics in the processor itself and skip out altogether because the Minecraft server does not use graphics whatsoever. So, now that we've got a kind of a game plan, we also want to, as I said, just go over and explain kind of the process behind um, where you should put this, where you should situate this, and also some, one last thing. You need a case, and I, I usually would make the exception that you could leave the case out, um, and you, know, you, you don't need a case, you can have an open system. But when you get dust, and especially in a room like mine, where I've got, I mean, I, 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 I keep it pretty clean, but for dust issues, dust catches on fire and should short out stuff. Now, usually this isn't a problem, but for example, if your computer has a lot of dust on it or it collects dust, it can short out, catch on fire. And if you're leaving it out on a table, uh, that's also a problem, especially when you leave systems out for a long time and running. So that's what you wanna make sure you include as a case as well. But so overall, we do not need a graphics card. Please don't invest money on it. Now, if you wanna make this like a side cheap gaming machine, then by all means throw a graphics card in there, but that, that's not gonna be something we include in our $50 budget today. So I'm gonna go find some parts. Wish me luck because it's going to be an interesting thing. I'm hoping for an i5, maybe 16, 16 gigs of RAM would be insane. Um, and then some type of SSD because we really, really, really need an SSD if you want decent performance. 60 gig, 120 gig, but it's going to have to be one of those two because otherwise it's going to be very, very, very expensive. Um, and I'm not getting a super big SSD. Now, if you always get backups in another separate backup um, machine or get an external hard drive, that's not what we're worried about. We're just getting the computer today. So I'm going to go pick out parts. Let's see what I can find and we'll be back here in a couple minutes. So welcome back, and let's show off what we actually managed to land for this $50 server build. So right now, I started with an i5-760, I believe, and that's what we were able to land for the CPU. This is four cores, 2.8 gigahertz boost clock, and 2.1 gigahertz base clock, I believe, and this is a pretty solid system, for, or it's a pretty solid CPU, four cores, and honestly, you leave two of those for the operating system, whatever that may be, and then another two of those for running your server, which is more than enough, especially because the servers nowadays don't tend to use a lot of CPU, more of RAM. And speaking of RAM, I managed to land eight gigabytes, two four gigabyte sticks of DDR3 RAM. And I don't remember the speed on this because it's actually missing the labels on them, but basically it's, hope it works and I think it just shouldn't have an issue the guy tested it for me um, and when I went to go buy this this is also the same uh, guy that I got the RAM sticks from last time uh, the last video that I made was about a minimum wage gaming PC check it out it was a pretty solid pretty funny system uh, but he had a bin full of RAM and I was when I grabbed uh, that RAM I saw this and I grabbed this too I figured we need this later on so next up we've got as I said the motherboard and this is a SATA 2 motherboard, which means it has 100 megabytes per second uh, over for the SSD. This is a SATA 3 SSD, and I believe this has like a 500 megabytes per second um, transfer rate. So we're still not getting the best out of the SSD, but we've pretty much maxed out to the, as, as good as we're going to get. And so I didn't get a graphics card because, as I said, a graphics card is unneeded for just running Minecraft server. But this motherboard does have an HDMI connector, a VGA connector, and I believe this is a... DVI cable, um, but it does have all the connections that we need. And it also has a lot of state of the cables, so if you want to add additional hard drives to back up your server, that would be something you could do in the future. So, let's see, the CPU, I believe the CPU cost me like 10 bucks, uh, along with the motherboard was a five, uh, another additional five bucks, so 15 bucks for the CPU and the motherboard. Um, the SSD itself was 10 bucks, so what does that leave us? 25 bucks so far, half our budget right here. Um, the RAM itself, this was actually five bucks as well. So that's, let's see, what does that leave us? 30 bucks so far. I also got this with the motherboard, it was free. So that's 30 bucks. Um, this was an additional five bucks, so 35 bucks. Power supply was 10 bucks. 
And that leaves us, what, with 45 bucks. And the reason why I decided to put 10 bucks into the power supply is because this is EVGA, it's bronze rated, and it's a 450 watt. It's EVGA, EVGA has solid. I'm not concerned about this power supply dying. It's a pretty solid power supply, so no concerns here. But yeah, on this case it was actually five bucks. Um, it had, it's missing a bunch of stuff. Uh, but for the most part, for five bucks, I'm not concerned about this case. It's got a side glass panel. It's got cracks and stuff all in it, but it's also scratched up on the back. But for five bucks, I was like, I'll take it. I'll have a case. Um, it has some extra fans in there. It had some modifications too. It had like a fan controller and stuff. So overall, it leaves us at 50 bucks. So now it's time to build the sucker. And as I said, this is going to be a pretty, I'll do a nice little showcase of the build and you guys can check it out. But overall, I'm not concerned about any bit of this build. This is pretty well rounded and it's also a pretty solid system altogether. You could also use this for doing homework or something, but this is really based around just a server centered idea. So if you really wanted to go for and do homework, I'd say even if you want to dabble in a little gaming, uh, this since the integrated graphics on this processor out now are like seven, eight years old, I wouldn't recommend it. Get a graphics card, it'll be just fine. So let's get building this and we'll see you in a couple seconds. So I've gone through and built the system up. Um, next is to decide on an operating system. Now, a lot of arguments will be made um, back when I did my server hosting business, we used a distribution of Linux, but really what it comes down to is what are you most familiar with? Because this is not a professional computer. This is not something that's going to be you know, server grade. It's not going to be super high tier. It's not going to be the best of the best. So really what it comes down to is what are you familiar with? And Windows, since you don't need to activate it, um, you could use Windows without a problem since you're probably familiar with how to set that up. You could probably install Windows, get everything going, and you'd be just fine. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna switch to um, get Windows installed on this. And I'm gonna go through and then switch to the screen actually on how to set it up. We're gonna use Windows. Um, Linux is a little bit more complicated, not saying it can't be done, it's actually quite easy if you know what you're doing. Um, but for my audience mostly being Windows users and probably more of the younger audience as well, I'm going to stick with Windows because it's most likely what they're familiar with. 
And I know there's going to be a bunch of people out there upset that I didn't use Linux, but you got to understand the audience. And honestly, if this was like a, if this was like 28 cores, and you know you had some crazy amount of RAM and stuff, and you want to do multiple um, servers running at the same time, then yeah, I'd say go for Linux and install a few things. But simply just for running a single server, we don't need to go through all that work. So let's switch to um, my boot it up and switch on my monitor, and we'll see where we go from there. Okay, so here we are, and I'm loading up Minecraft right now. I've got the server running over there, and we're going to go through and load us up and play a little bit of Minecraft. Now, if you're unfamiliar, um, basically I've got this running. Uh, I've done a couple things in the meantime. I have this port forwarded. Um, it's not necessarily port forwarded. Well, it is port forwarded, but I'm going to connect using the local IP address. Um, so as you can see here, this is... Um, this is an old server that I've had, and this is the local IP address, so if you look at this, you're not going to end up with finding my IP. Nice try. Um, but we're going to do a kind of a benchmark of the server real quick. So as I said, it's sitting over there, um, but, but the best part about this, though, is we can figure out how well this actually runs. So the big thing about this is the SSD I've got running. Um, I've got three monitors going uh, currently. But um, basically, we're just going to look at a couple things. First off, chunks lo loaded relatively quickly. Um, I had no one's been on the server for a bit, so therefore I wouldn't necessarily say that you should be all concerned uh, that no one's uh, that it took a while to load everything up. Um, and the thing is, uh, when you attack mobs, pretty instant. That was almost instant. Um, so I'm pretty able to go through and just walk around, look at things. Um, there was a little bit lag, but I think that was client side. Um, but for the most part, you take a look at all the stuff and no problem loading in chunks. Chunks are quick, especially because of the SSD. Um, no issues whatsoever. And then, uh, yeah, so honestly, really happy with how this looks. Um, block breaking is instant. You get the items. Um, and obviously, we have a couple people to test on. But for the most part, this is really, really solid. And honestly, if you left this running, I have no worries, especially since you've got an air cooler and not a liquid cooler on the system. Uh, it, you really shouldn't have any issues with the server crashing. you got solid parts in i5. Um, I did have to install some drivers for the uh, HD graphics because I was using. Um, but th for the most part, that was, it's pretty solid. And for a server, especially, I think with about 8 gigabytes of RAM, you could easily get four, five, six people um, playing Minecraft without a problem and on the same server. And I think the only thing I'd really say is once you get past maybe 20 people, um, I'd recommend maybe upgrading your RAM. Um, and that's also kind of the range that you may want to consider upgrading your CPU because after that, it just gets uh, quite competitive and for the resources and therefore you get really really lacking um, so just keep that in mind is if you really want to go more than that make something professional perhaps then make sure you go through and pay a little bit of extra money uh, maybe for a little slightly better CPU so you can take advantage of that and also consider um, maybe upgrading to a bigger SSD or a backup hard drive if the world is that important and I swear this thing has been mined out so many times um, but that would be it that would be the whole build right here guys that is the computer itself uh, i'm not going to focus on the port forwarding because there are i would say millions of videos out there doing a wonderful better job than i am i'm just going to patch these holes up um but for the most part the, the big thing to keep in mind is port forwarding is important and also setting up the server itself the physical or not the physical server but the software side so making sure you have the plugins all the stuff that you want on your server which is honestly another separate topic altogether Basically, today's video is pretty much just me talking about the hardware side and actually physically testing and benchmarking this hardware that we're playing on right now on a separate computer. And this is all really any server is. It's just a computer that's running somewhere else. Um, and for this one, you get to have it in your house. And if you had a couple of buddies on, you guys wouldn't have any problem and have a wonderful time. You could even turn it off and save electricity that way too. And then you wouldn't have any problems whatsoever um, when you wanted to go play some Minecraft. You could just open up the server, your buddies can hop on and have a wonderful time so as i said that's gonna wrap it up for today's video thank you guys very much for watching hope you guys enjoyed today's special uh i guess computer build video uh let me know if you have a uh, i guess a, a build that you would recommend or you have a, an idea for what you want me to do in the future and i guess that will wrap it up for today's video and that's a creeper thank you guys very much for watching have a wonderful day goodbye